good afternoon everybody i know some of for some people it might be morning good morning as well am i audible am i audible to all yes sujin yes you are audible thank you we will start the session by 2:30 pm i speak hello yeah okay we can continue thank you all for attending this webinar on demystifying cloud containers and automation which is being organized by the faculty of engineering and technology botha university botswana in association with ipsr solutions limited india the digital transformation during the covid pandemic has forced the industry to adopt scalable secure reliable cost effective off premises technology services which resulted in an ever high demand for cloud containers and automation during this webinar we will try to explain these technologies in a simple manner my name is uh, sujit jacob george i am working as global relations manager with ipsa solutions limited and i will be the event moderator for this event please note all the registered participants will receive an the access to the lms through which you can actually download a certificate for this
the uh, link of which I'll put it in the chat shortly. So you can use, utilize that as well, okay? Now, speaking about IPSR, IPSR is led by a team of acclimations and entrepreneurs. IPSR is a public limited IT company with 23 plus years of expertise in software product development, training services, placement services, and web-based services. During the last two decades, IPSR has worked with over 500 academic organizations, including government universities, autonomous colleges, technical and non-technical institutions. Our training division conducts faculty development trainings, seminars, workshops, add-on courses, corporate trainings, job Hello, Sujin. Can you hear me?
good afternoon everyone very warm welcome to all of you hope i'm audible yes yashika you are thank you all for attending this webinar on demystifying cloud containers and automation organized by the faculty of engineering and technology botho university botswana in association with ipsr solutions limited india the digital transformation during the covid pandemic has forced the industries to adopt scalable secure reliable cost effective off premises technology services which has resulted in an ever high demand for cloud containers and automation and during this webinar we will explain to you uh, these technologies in a simple manner and also please note that all the registered participants will receive access to the lms through which you can download the certificate all the participants will receive the details of this to their registered email id by the mid of next week and before we begin a little about ipsr solutions it is led by a team of academicians and entrepreneurs ipsr is a public limited it company with 23 plus years of expertise in software product development training services placement services and web based services and during the last two decades ipsr has worked with over 500 academic organizations including government universities autonomous colleges technical and non technical institutions our training division fact conducts faculty development training seminars workshop add on courses corporate trainings job oriented trainings etc in the education it and it's domain and we were the training partner for the technical education quality improvement program a world bank assisted project executed in government engineering colleges by the indian ministry of hrd we are the world's leading red hat training and certification partner with 37 national and international awards and produce the highest number of red hat professionals in the world so far we can we have trained candidates from 60 plus countries our it services division is a pioneer in development of academic solution products incorporating cutting edge technologies like artificial intelligence data analytics and machine learning we offer specialized services and solutions for the educational sector ranging from simple websites to complex software applications that help manage academic and operational activities like question paper generation campus automation accreditation process nac mba etc and outcome based education our placement division is having 1600 plus placement tie up companies and we are conducting recruitment recruitment on all days and a little about botho university botho university was established in botswana in, by 1997 and it is a multi disciplinary high quality education provider in southern african development community region uh, botho university offers its services across six different campuses botswana ghana lesotho eswatini namibia and blended and distance learning campus the university works towards its mission to produce well rounded entrepreneurial and global employable graduates with attitude knowledge skills and competencies to create value and drive productivity increases to catalyze sustainable economical growth botho university facilitates research international partnerships industry linkages community engagement employability initiatives green campus and digital transformation the university operates with four faculties namely faculty of business and accounting faculty of engineering and technology faculty of health and education and faculty of hospitality and sustainable tourism faculty of engineering and technology delivers cutting edge programs like bsc in data science bsc honors in computing bsc honors in mobile computing bsc in cyber security and risk management bsc honors in network security and computer forensics engineer bachelor of engineering honors in computer engineering bsc honors in multimedia system bsc the honors in electrical engineering msc information system management and several certificate certificate level programs also now if 
uh, it is possible could all of you all turn on your videos for 30 seconds as we would like to take a screenshot for the documentation purpose i request all the participants to please kindly turn on your videos Thank you all. Now, as the resource person, we have Mr. Zen John Providence, MSc, RHC, RHCI, Manager, Technical Services of IPSR Solutions Limited. Sir is a Red Hat certified architect and a Red Hat certified instructor with 15 plus years experience in the IT industry. He completed his MSc in computer networking from London Metropolitan University. He is expertise in cloud computing, Ansible, etc. Makes him popular as a corporate trainer and a trained candidate. Asia Pacific and global certificate ID certifications in Red Hat certified specialist in OpenShift administration. Red Hat Certified Specialist in Containers and Kubernetes, Red Hat Certified Engineer, and Red Hat Certified Administrator. That's all. Thank you, and over to Sir. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Ashika and Sitchin, for the introduction. Um, and also, I would like to thank uh, both our university and IPSR Solutions Limited for giving this opportunity to yeah, run this webinar, yeah. Yeah, uh, let me start with uh, sharing my screen. Please confirm when you can see my screen. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, participants, uh, uh, please uh, confirm in the chat box so that you can uh, be familiar with the chat box. Okay. Okay, yeah. So, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar on demystifying cloud containers and automation. Um, I will start with my professional uh, journey in these domains, uh, when I was a network administrator, I started learning Linux. Uh, then I, I involved in projects in Linux, then Linux automation, uh, then implementation of this task in cloud and uh, containerization, uh, and also how to automate this task using some tools like Ansible. So, <clears throat> In this webinar, uh, I am planning to uh, give basic idea about uh, cloud containerization and automation. I mainly focus on uh, giving demonstration on these domains because that will help you to understand uh, very easily uh, what what are these right? like uh, cloud containerization and uh, automation. Uh, so let me. Make it a full screen. Okay. Okay, so before cloud computing, uh, before virtualization, our uh, before yeah, these uh, latest technologies, we were using self-service in the sense uh, 
we just buy the hard buy hardwares like systems, hard disks, or laptops, and we just completely depend on these devices to keep our data or on our applications. Yeah, that initially. So if we divide this IT evolution uh, cycle into four phases, yeah, we'll start with we started with self service. Then we moved on to uh, centralized or dedicated infrastructures like, uh, yeah, some serv uh, some dedicated service for uh, application A, some dedicated service for backup, some dedicated service for name resolution, or DHCP, or 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 any 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 kind of uh, purpose or activities. We we just create a centralized resources and and we share with the different clients. So that is managed IT infrastructures. Then we converted this into <clears throat> virtualized IT infrastructures with the help of uh, from Red Hat, I can say uh, Red Hat virtualization or VMware. So with help of any kind of virtualized technologies, we virtualize these information. Then cloud computing. Yeah, that is one of the topic in our webinar, right? Cloud computing. So cloud computing is actually uh, same like in the beginning self service. So instead of buying these uh, this hardware directly, uh, we can utilize these resources like computing, storage, network. We can utilize these resources as a utility, just like an electricity. Electricity as a utility, right? Or water as a service or a utility, just like that. Instead of uh, making these resources in our in-house, we can just consume these uh, resources uh, from service providers. So that is why we we simply define cloud as a delivery of computing, storage, and network as a utility. <clears throat> uh, uh, just like I told earlier, like electricity or, or like uh, water, or like any kind of resources, we just consume these resources from any kind of cloud providers. So if you are new to the cloud technology or if you're confused about what is cloud, then you can just simply understand it's a delivery of computing because you know that you you, you, uh, you must have used computer or you are using a computer now or a mobile device. It needs some computing power storage and network of course with the help of this mobile device computing or laptop or system device computing power you are watching my webinar and 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 uh, it has got some storage that's why uh, operating system is installed into that device and of course you are you being utilized with the network resources because through internet you are seeing my webinar right and or you are uh, hearing uh, why uh, hearing my voice so these all resources uh, in in a time we utilized from our own devices but instead of that whenever uh, we get any demand of these kind of resources we can simply uh, use as a utility like electricity or water <clears throat> So there are three types of uh, cloud service model that is based on the service uh, uh, in which the cloud provides, like infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. So there are three categories based on cloud service model. So like I told earlier, instead of an organization uh, purchasing hardware, Companies purchase IAS based subscription, or it can they can consumption uh, can consume these resources based on these models. So this model enables companies to add, delete, or reconfigure uh, their IT infrastructure uh, whenever it demands. Anyway, I I'm going to demonstrate these three categories: IAS and uh, platform as a service, software as a service. While demonstrating, uh, you will get more idea about the difference between uh, the service models. So in platform as a service, just for example, the developers 
they can just focus on writing the code and uh, create applications without worrying about the time consuming in uh, IT infrastructure activities or such as provisioning servers, storage and backup. They, these, these, these all things are readily available from uh, cloud providers like AWS, GCP, that is Google Cloud or Microsoft Azure, et cetera. So they are providing these resources as platform as a service. So as a developer or a designer or any kind of uh, uh, a professional, uh, if they need any resource from a cloud, yeah, they can choose any one of these. So platform as a service uh, just provides the platform, not the complete infrastructure. We will see the difference in the next slide. In software as a service, we all uses that email, Gmail, yeah, browser-based email or browser-based uh, storages like uh, Amazon S3 or <coughs> sorry, or Google Drive. That that is actually storage as a service from cloud, and also one of the example of software as a service. So most software as a uh, service applications can be accessed directly from a web server without any any downloads or installation. So can you uh, imagine, or uh, maybe you remember uh, in earlier days we used to install, I'm, I'm not sure about uh, how long you are uh, in this IT industry, but when I started with checking my emails, I remember that I used to install the mail clients uh, like MS Outlook or any, uh, or, uh, or if I remember correctly, Thunderbird, Lotus Notes. I used to install these mail clients in my laptop or system to check my mail. But after cloud or after software as a service, we, we, we all can just view our emails through a web browser. So that is the difference uh, came in between before and after cloud. Maybe you, 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 you started using emails directly from browser based Gmail accounts or any kind of mail accounts. That, that is actually an example of software as a service. But in the initial days of my IT journey, I used uh, email clients, which, which, which I had to install in my system to check my emails. So that is software as a service. When we compare uh, the respons responsibility of managing the resources under these uh, different models. So the first line, uh, traditional IT, uh, the, I mean the first column, it's completely managed by ourselves. Applications, data, runtime, middleware, operating system, virtualization, servers, storage, networking. It just this is just an example of in-house data center, in-house data center. That is before virtualization or before cloud. We we manage to. Uh, run the data center in our house or in, I mean in our, in our house means that uh, office premises, the private premises. <clears throat> so that is private data center. So we we all responsible for managing the network. Uh, power in case of, uh, I mean power backup in case of power failure. Right. Yeah. So A, A to Z. Yeah. Anything related to everything related to and IT infrastructure, yeah, we 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 were responsible for uh, managing these resources uh, when we, when it considers as a traditional IT. But in uh, just a minute, it's blocking my screen. Yeah, but in infrastructure as a service, uh, the applications, data, runtime, middleware. We manage, I mean, uh, as a client or as a consumer, we manage or we, we will take care of this. But the operating system, virtualization technology, servers, storage, networking, power backup, et cetera, will be managed by the cloud service provider like AWS, GCP, or Microsoft Azure. So that is the advantage of using infrastructure. So if you are a student or if you are a professional, uh, planning to start a startup because for for starting up uh, for starting a startup business may, you may need some data center so we can create virtual data centers with help of 
infrastructure as a service from any kind of cloud providers. We just need to pay as you go. But before cloud computing, we have to set up our own data center, right? So the, the initial costs were involved in that. But in uh, infrastructure as a service, just consume the resources and and most of the things are response uh, most of the things are managed by the cloud provider the things like application data of course that is our data right so we are responsible then runtime like uh, we will discuss in the coming slides like containerization then middleware or any kind of softwares we manage in the case of infrastructure as a service in platform as a service yeah compared to infrastructure as a service we don't have to worry about the operating system or middleware or runtime. We just look into the application and our data. Just, just these two things like uh, applications and data. Just imagine you are a developer. <clears throat> okay, just imagine you are a developer. Uh, uh, I mean, a Python developer, yeah. So, so uh, doing some Python uh, development, you need some infra, right? You need some uh, virtual or physical infra to set up the uh, environment and, and do the coding and, and, and making the source code. So being a developer, you just need to uh, think about, okay, how the uh, programming language or will help you to uh, do the source code or manage the data. Rest, everything will be taken care of by platform as a service from any one of the uh, cloud providers. So that is the advantage of platform as a service over infrastructure. Don't need to worry about the platform management or or what or what are the operating system or which operating system is uh, backing up these applications. That comes under the responsibility of the provider. It's delivered as a service. When it comes to software as a service, you know Google Drive. Of course, uh, we uh, you we are responsible for uploading and downloading the data, but here the data management, the data management in the sense making this data highly available, making this data highly available, that is the responsibility of the provider. You just upload your resume into the cloud, or you just upload your uh, data into the Google Drive. Maybe that. Uh, that data lies in a one of the disk in the uh, Google class, uh, Google storage cluster, right? Or Google storage uh, disk array. You, you, you know, you don't have to worry about, okay, if that disk fails, you don't have to worry about uh, the managing the disk backup. That everything is taken care of by uh, the backup solution provided by the provider. So we are just for, just responsible for uploading and downloading and uh, just, uh, if you if you just need to modify anything into that uh, document or you just modify that, but uh, we don't have to worry about <clears throat> backing up or making that document or data highly available. So these are the uh, simple way of uh, differentiating uh, different types of services offered by cloud providers. Infrastructure as a service that is complete. Uh, infrastructure. Uh, as a service that is virtual infrastructure. Within that, we can provide platform as a service, then software as a service. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was based on service model, but when it comes to the deployment model, there are three categories, public, uh, private, and hybrid. Examples like AWS, GCP, Azure, yeah, they are public uh, cloud service providers. You just need to sign up an account in AWS, GCP, or Azure. Uh, and, and, and on the moment itself, you can start uh, utilizing the resources provided by the clouds. Like it can be a computing power or a storage or a network. We'll see. We'll see you that uh, uh, demonstration in a, in 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 a, in a minute. Yeah, so it's scalable, scalable in the sense uh, when it demands more resources, 
either manually or automatically we can scale out whenever it's debranched. For example, I think most of you are belongs to uh, academic solutions, right? Yeah, universities or schools or <clears throat> colleges. Just think about uh, when admissions are open or when the university results are out. Can you can you imagine the traffic comes into that server in which the results are out? So when it when it compares to a normal days, the traffic will be higher than a normal days, right? Yeah, so most of the time it may crash. So which means sometimes we need more resources to manage. It's just like uh, you, you've been to supermarkets, supermarkets, right? Or hypermarkets, right? There will be a different checkout, right? Maybe 30 to 50, but in a normal times, if there is a very less uh, consumer, uh, consumers waiting in the queue, maybe one to five checkouts are open. When there is a large queue, more checkouts will be open. So which means, yeah, the checkouts has to be there to open when it's needed. Can you imagine in your in, in your own premises when it needs more resource to manage your web server or database server or any kind of application? Can you imagine that? Oh, right. It, it, that, that is not possible uh, in a minute, right? <clears throat> but in the cloud providers, they can scale out these resources up to whatever you want. So don't worry, I'm going to demonstrate that. In demonstration, I will set up a web server, then I'll give you the link uh, to everyone in the chat box so that you can access. And if the load goes up, it automatically uh, scales out so that there won't be any downtime. Maybe there is a downtime, then I will fix it, then uh, it won't make any downtime. <clears throat> so that kind of demonstrations and workshops coming up in this, uh, in this webinar. So that is the advantage of public. But uh, some industries like defense, banking sectors, insurance, they want their data to keep keep in their geographical location for the uh, safety purpose. So they don't want to keep their data in, in any public cloud or any, any, any cloud which is outside their geographical location. So for that kind of domains, or business, they can implement private cloud in their premises. Examples right I had OpenStack. Yeah, it's an example, best example for setting up a private cloud. So that will be scalable, of course, but we are responsible for that. But we we get the benefits of cloud computing. Then it's secure, flexible, and greater control because we are the managers of that, right? So we will get greater control on private clouds. But some business or some companies or some organization, they are looking for the advantages of both public and private. So they have some public data, which 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 has to be highly available and managed by a service provider. So they can take the help from public cloud provider. Uh, and, and they have some confidential data. And and if they don't want to keep that data in a public cloud, yeah, they can set up their own private cloud. So combination of this, we can call it as hybrid. So hybrid means we get the benefits of public and private together. And of course, that is cost effective. So wherever we can <clears throat> reduce the cost by public cloud, yeah, we can say cost effective. And uh, for keeping your confidential data, yeah, that for that there is no other choice, yeah, because we have to keep in our own our own premises, so we go with uh, private. So and combination of public and private that is hybrid. <clears throat> so this is based on deployment, public, private, and hybrid, and IaaS, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service that was based on service models. <clears throat> Okay, let's look into uh, the demonstration of load balanced web servers in AWS. So this is what I'm going to demonstrate. Uh, I have already 
launch three web servers in AWS, not in my system, in AWS. And, and, and I did a lot of balancing. So from your laptop or a tablet or a, a mobile devices, you can access that. So just give me a moment. I am changing my screen to AWS dashboard. <clears throat> So plenty of services offered by the cloud providers like AWS. So this is one of the service, okay. So load balancer. So this is the load balancer link through which you can access my web servers. So this I'm going to paste in the chat box. Before that, let me check from my system. Yes, welcome to web server three. Web server one, web server two, because we have, I, I have launched three web servers to do the load balancing. So let's see how the loads are balanced. I'm pasting into the chat box. Please uh, click on the link in the chat box and type the result. If it is web server one, just type one. If it is web server two, then two. If it is web server three, type three. So I would rec uh, I request everyone to type your result. Yeah, some are saying one, some are saying two, some are saying three. Yeah. <clears throat> Who is saying hundred? I'm sure that you will get either uh, any of these values, web server one, two, or three. So can you please, uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, in between I am sharing the link. See, I launched a simple web server without utilizing my own resources and without any cost also because AWS provides one year free uh, tire subscription. So in which I can set up as, <clears throat> I mean, very little amount of resource setups. Okay, now you can refresh the page. When you refresh, the outcome will be different. Those who go, uh, uh, who got uh, web server one, now it changed to maybe changed to two or three. Right, yeah. So just refresh the page and you will see that the page is getting refreshed with the different uh, outcomes, right? Yeah. So this is because of three web servers. So normally, each server has got its own unique URL to access. But here, we use a load balanced, I mean, load balancer link. Yeah, I'm going back to the slide. <clears throat> yeah, just to explain what is happening here now. Actually, I gave the link of the load balancer. Okay, just like a project leader, right? So if you want to uh, get some updates from a project, instead of asking an individual team member, we go to the project leader or project manager, right? And get the feedbacks, right? So the same way the load balancer is acting as the leader of these web servers. So we communicate from laptops or tablets or desktops or from mobile devices through the internet. We connect to this load balancer and this load balancer has got an algorithm called uh, round robin algorithm. Uh, I hope you all are familiar with the round robin algorithm. So if there are three servers, it runs in one, two, three, one, two, three, like that way, right? So uh, if if the first com uh, customer gets the uh, web server page one, 
the second customer gets web page two, then third one web page three, and fourth one gets one page one day one again. So that's why when you refresh the content, the page coming up uh, <clears throat> displaying it's from different servers. But in reality, the all the images of the servers will be same, right? But the, here I changed uh, in a different way so that you can get get it convinced convinced that okay the dot balancer is working. Just for that for that reason, I I I, okay, I made this web service with a different content. But later on, um, I will be using the same image. Yes. In between, I got a message. Cannot hear anything. Can someone confirm me, please? Am I audible? Yes, yes. So if you are <coughs> sorry, some are some are saying not audible. Just log out and log in again. Uh, that will be okay. I think. Yeah. Okay. So this is load balancer in web server. Three web servers running here. <coughs> yeah, out of five, three are sorry, dedicated for web servers. Yeah, uh, you you may want to know how I created this instance, right? Yeah. So. Once you get the subscription, this is free subscription from AWS. It's just like buying your system virtually. Yeah, just think in that way. You are buying a system virtually. Buying a system means you normally uh, when you buy uh, when you when you buy any laptop or system, yeah, you are more concerned about how much storage, right, and which operating system and uh, how much GB RAM, right? Random access memory and uh, uh, what is the CPU count? The same way you can buy it virtually. That is the advantage of cloud computing. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm going to name my system as my server. Okay, my server. Then choose the operating system. Some of the operating systems are free tail eligible. Uh, sorry. Mistakenly press the back button. My server. So here you can choose the operating system. So I go with Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux. That is one of the free tier eligible operating system. Yeah. <clears throat> then instance type. In instance type, so let's see what is the maximum resource I can get it from this Mumbai data center. So if I scroll down, Can you imagine a machine with a 48 CPU and 384 GB memory? It's possible virtually here from here. But uh, yeah, we had to pay for that. But not that's that's not free. And there are uh, that is 384. Yeah, I, I know there are some uh, virtual machines we can create with the. Uh, 4,000 GB of RAM, not, not the storage, don't confuse. 4,000 GB of RAM. Our laptop or uh, system random access memories are 4 GB, right? Maybe 4 GB or 8 GB or 16 GB. So here I'm talking about RAM with 384 GB or 4,000 GB. Yeah, these all are possible in a minute. Yeah, you just need to pay for that. But whenever you need a, a supercomputer like this, you don't have to buy. You just virtually create 
and your laptop or your mobile device will act as the input and output device. The computing storage network, network in the sense, the load balancer. The load balancer I configured in AWS, not in my system. So just in case if my laptop goes down, still you can uh, access my web servers because that is completely managed by a cloud service provider. Computing storage network. So three resources I utilized from AWS. So I don't have to worry about my office power backup or my home power backup or network because it's completely managed and running in a, a AWS data center. So this is how I created just for understanding. You, you can also create uh, at the end of this webinar, I will give you the free links Using that, you can set up your own lab environments. I mean, cloud lab environments. Once I complete cloud containerization and automation, we'll give you the free, <clears throat> free links for practicing this. Yeah. Okay, so that was load balanced web servers in AWS. Uh, I hope still that web server is running. Yeah, because this is load balanced. So. There is no downtime. Okay. <clears throat> okay, we are continuing with the. Uh, yeah, that, that was the main topics about cloud, and we we, we saw some demonstration also. Now lo let's look into uh, deployment mechanisms and uh, supportability. Yes, yeah, just think in a simple way. You have a system, uh, whether you are a developer or a normal IT professional or a student, <clears throat> you install different applications into your system, right? Application A, application B, application C. I'm not saying the names, but you install multiple applications into your system. Some applications are okay with some others, and some other some some applications are not. For example, application one and application three are okay with each other in a single operating system, but not application two. It may happen. If 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 it is not had happened, it may happen in the future. I mean, in your experience. But how we overcome? We managed these challenges, or we overcome with virtualization. So application one and application two, if application one and two is okay with each other, then we put it in a virtual machine. Yeah, virtual machine that is, <coughs> we create a uh, guest operating system. <coughs> Sorry. We create a uh, guest operating system, we, we create virtual machines and uh, we install guest operating system into that. Just a minute. Okay, I'm back. Can someone confirm me, please? Am I audible? Okay, thank you. Yeah, so these two are if, if these two applications are okay, we can put it in a single virtual machine. And if the application three is not okay with application one and two, then we keep we keep it separately. We keep it separately with a different virtual machine. <clears throat> but think but think about the extra resources utilized by these virtual machines. So we were running these three applications in a single operating system. All of a sudden, we we upgraded the operating system, but with that operating system, application one, two is okay, but not with the application three. So because of that, we created two virtual machines, additional resource utilization, right? 
we, uh, we know that there are <clears throat> lots of uh, advantages of benefits with virtualization, but in terms of, or if you look into these deployment mechanisms, we just need to isolate the application. At that time, we were <clears throat> creating virtual machines that, 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 that gives more burden <clears throat> into the resource utilization. But in, when it comes to the containerization, yeah, that is the second word in our webinar, right? Containers. <clears throat> when it comes into containerization, we create containers instead of virtual machines. No layer of guest operating system. So we get the advantages of isolated applications, which means no dependencies each other, plus no additional resource utilization like virtualization. So this is called containerization. In containerization, we create containers, nothing but an application. So for a, for a, a consumer or a, for a client or a, for, for a normal person, the container is just an application. But for this operating system, container is an isolated process, just an isolated process. <clears throat> So in earlier days, we installed this application into the operating system, but in containerization, we run this application on top of host operating system with help of a, a concept called container engine. <clears throat> you might have heard about Docker, Portman, Cryo, etc. So these are the examples of container engine. So what are the advantages of containerization compared to virtualization and uh, normal <clears throat> application deployment? two advantages one is we can deploy our applications without any dependencies without any dependency in the sense no dependencies with the other applications and no dependencies with the operating system second the cost cutting cost effective compared to virtualization been in, in, in virtualization we were creating virtual machines and isolating this but we can combine it together uh, if it is required, like containers, <clears throat> containerization on virtualization. Yeah, that is also possible. That depends on our requirement. So in short, container is an application, an isolated application or isolated process. With the help of container engine, we manage the life, of, life cycle of containers. <clears throat> So containers, what is it? <clears throat> application runtime that access shared operating system kernel without the need of virtual machines. So here Docker is an example of container engine. So we just need an infrastructure. Yeah, of course, we say virtual machines, virtual uh, cloud, right? But somewhere, uh, we have to manage some hardware, right? Somewhere someone has to manage the hardware. When I launch the load balancer with three web servers, for us, it is a virtual concept, like with virtual web servers, virtual load balancers. But in AWS Mumbai data center, yeah, I'm getting these physical resources like computing, storage, and network resources from a physical devices, which is located at AWS Mumbai data center. <clears throat> so infrastructure that has been a physical one, yeah, on top of that, we can be a virtualized one also, but the, the, the bottom layer is physical one, yeah. We cannot create uh, resources from the air, right? Yeah, so there has to be a, a physical layer at the very bottom. Then host operating system, there are <clears throat> dedicated operating systems for containerization, for example, like uh, CoreOS, yeah, CoreOS is a, a dedicated, Operating system for containerization. Docker is for managing. It's a container engine for managing the life cycle of containers. Life cycle of containers like creation of container, uh, then restarting containers. Just imagine a, a container as a process or, or, or a normal application. Yeah, sometimes we need to start the application, stop the application, restart the applications. Sometimes, uh, if it is no longer required, you need to delete the application. So these all lifecycle tasks we manage using 
container engines and docker is one of the example let's see some demo on that <coughs> docker and podman podman is another <coughs> container engine uh, using that you can download image and create containers using os kernel i mean os kernel uh, must be there uh, in top of that we run the containers so please be familiar with these uh, words containers we already discussed applications right virtual applications or isolated application or isolated process and we we saw the advantage of containerization for creating container we need image <clears throat> for installing operating system we need iso image right for creating virtual machines we need virtual machine images for installing application you need the software the software image just like that you need container image for creating containers and from where you get these images if you don't have that images from image registry it's a repository of images so they are publicly hosted uh, image repositories one of the image publicly hosted and also <clears throat> sponsored by red hat one is qa qa is a, a publicly sponsored uh, <clears throat> A container registry or very popular one is docker hub from there you can download the images and uh, create containers anyway i'm going to demonstrate this yeah <clears throat> so for doing that we need a, a virtual machine or a machine yeah just a machine so i completely depend on aws instance then <coughs> sorry I have a machine, RHEL, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. I'm connecting to that server remotely. I'm connecting to that <clears throat> rel machine in which I'm going to launch the containers. So I'm going to give you a challenge like I will set up a single container uh, with a web server <clears throat> without load balancer. So if you can, yeah, just crash the instance or crash the container. Yeah, if the container get crashed, don't worry, I have another solution that comes under next topic. But that this is your, uh, this is the challenge I'm giving to you all. <clears throat> Yeah, you all need to try and uh, crash this container. Okay, so uh, let me log in. <clears throat> I think I have that. Uh, Just give me a minute. Yeah, I need to install these tools, container tools. Okay, great. It's already installed. Portman, yeah, Portman is the engine. I'm going to use this. <clears throat> I don't have any containers which is running and uh, Portman images. Yeah, I have an Apache web server here. <clears throat> Maybe not here. I already pasted the link in the history. Okay, not a problem. 
Yeah, this is the command for <clears throat> creating a container. We know for creating container, we need container image <clears throat> that I'm going to download it from QA.io. It's a free publicly available repository sponsored by Red Hat. The name I'm going to give this container HTTPD basic. And the port 8080. Yeah, that, that is more about networking. Yeah, I'm not going in detail into that. Just I'm um, going to run the container. <clears throat> Once it is ready, I will give you the link for the web server. Curl, localhost. It's right, so that support which is hello from HTTP parent container. Okay, <clears throat> so I used eight zero eight zero here. So, yeah, care localhost I can run locally through internet. You need the public IP, so I'll give the rel server public IP. <clears throat> So this is not load balanced, <clears throat> okay? So let's see, it's zero, it's zero. Yeah, I'm just allowing access to this instance because by default it is disabled. Just give me a moment. Okay, so this is the URL. I'm pasting the chat box. <clears throat> yeah, just write this URL and let's see you are, are you able to see the content hello from HTTP parent container. If you can see the content, please type S in the chat box. Still, I'm able to access the web server. That means it is not yet down. <clears throat> yeah, if you can, you can try from your mobile device. Yeah, try to increase the traffic to this container. So keep in mind that no load balancer. And also it is running in, in, a, in a small container, not in a virtual machine. This application, the web server application is running in a container. We already uh, saw the benefits of container, right? So compared to virtual machine, Containers are very lightweight. 
in the sense it, it, it utilizes very less amount of resources. Let's see, with less amount of resource, it's serving this basic con <coughs> container out, uh, output. Uh -huh. Yeah, actually, I, I was expecting this container is going to down. Then uh, <clears throat> I will move on to the next topic, which can uh, overcome the challenges here, yeah, but not enough traffic, right? Hey, anyway, it's good. Without a load balancer or auto scaling, we have managed to run this web server. Yeah, yes, yeah, do. Yeah, you can do whatever you can. Yes, yes, yeah. Try it, yeah. So I thought you were supposed to crash it. Yes, yeah, try it. Still, it's accessible, right? It's not at crashed. So try whatever way you can. Try to crash, crash this container. So let me go back to the container terminal. Let's see the status of that. That is in my terminal. Right. It's working and uh, Portman PS. It's still running. <clears throat> Portman uh, uh, ex easy it that is interactive terminal with this httpd hyphen basic then slash bin bash I'm kind of trying to get the load on this container sorry Portman ex easy just ex easy <coughs> is the name of the httpd yes <clears throat> but the top command is not installed here okay anyway still i'm able to access the container no downtime here Still able to access. And in this instance, also not much load. Still, I'm easily <clears throat> access this instance. Okay. So that was the demonstration on containerization using Portman. So I saw some question in the chat box. Yeah, Portman. So Portman is one of the container engine which used to manage the life cycle of containers yeah <clears throat> okay so before this slide i was expecting yeah that that container crashed okay then we need to implement a load balanced environment with auto scaling that is not possible uh, by default with a container engine like Portman. <clears throat> like we need uh, some tools which can help us to manage the configuration, provisioning, availability, scaling, security, resource allocation, load balancing, health monitoring. Because just now we created a container without any of this. Just created a container if i stop the container then you won't be able to so what i will do i will stop manually then because that container not at crashed so i will do it manually still able to right yeah so i use portman <coughs> stop the container name that is sttpd hyphen basic <clears throat> yeah, it's going to stop. So now you try the connection refused, and if I try from the web server, web page, the site can't be reached. 
because when I stopped one container, uh, everything goes down. There is no backup. There is no load balancing. So that is the uh, limitation, not limitation. Yeah, but we can overcome with some tools like uh, orchestration, container orchestration. Yeah, you might have heard about uh, OpenShift or Kubernetes. Kubernetes is an example, best example of container orchestration. So it is not replacing the container engines. So because uh, some students may uh, say uh, things like that way. When I say there are some limitations with the container engine, the container orchestration is not replacing container engines with container engine and container orchestration we can make our applications highly available and scalable okay please note for uh, that that engines like portman docker cryo <clears throat> we use it for containerization technology the technologies like kubernetes openshift or docker swarm we we use it for orchestration or automation of containerization engines and tools. Okay, so this we need the combination of this container engine and container orchestration. Combination of Docker with Kubernetes, Podman with Kubernetes, or Cryo with Kubernetes. Cryo with Kubernetes, yes. Cryo with Kubernetes. You can get it from Red Hat OpenShift container platform. So this is one of the example of platform as a service, which contains containerization engine, just like Portman or Docker. There is another one called Cryo, on top of a dedicated or specialized operating system from Red Hat. Sorry, that is Core OS. In top of that Cryo runtime. Then orchestration managed by Kubernetes. Then uh, ju just to keep our cluster available, highly available, and uh, uh, make sure the data is stored safely. There is a database etcd. Then some more advanced tools, just like DevOps advanced tools, runtimes, containerized service, etc., uh, is added by Red Hat, and is all together we call it as Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform. So this is a combination of containerization using Cryo, container orchestration using Kubernetes, an operating system where I had REL core OS, and this is called platform as a service, the second uh, service model from cloud. So infrastructure service, that second one is platform as a service. And shortly, I'm going to demonstrate this also with all the benefits of containerization and container orchestration. Okay, <clears throat> let's see load balanced environment, which scales out automatically. As I mentioned earlier, just think about your university or college or any websites, which gets traffic in, in, in a different times, like maybe morning very less, maybe noon time, uh, more traffic, maybe evening it goes down. Okay, so if you have if you have a website or a server gets traffic in a different uh, ways, like in different times. So how we manage? If the traffic is constant, constant, yeah, then we we can manage like uh, the yeah we can manage the same way I managed with these three web servers. Because I knew that for serving these customers, three web servers were uh, enough to manage. But in reality, in a production environment, we cannot predict how many are going to access our websites. Uh, uh, examples like when, 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 in, when it's an uh, admission time or when the results are out. Yeah, uh, maybe for the results out, we may. Uh, we can easily predict how, how many of are going to check the websites, but what about the admission? 
or what about some websites uh, a retail website which gives some offers uh, during uh, during some days so in that days uh, the traffic to the web server the retail web server goes high right we cannot predict that so we need a mechanism which does load balancing and auto scaling which means automatically grows the resource cap uh, capacity automatically grows the number of cpus automatically grows the number of random access memory automatically grows the resources for setting up network devices that is what i'm going to demonstrate with the platform as a service from red hat that is red hat openshift yes yeah <clears throat> <clears throat> this is my <clears throat> Red Hat OpenShift dashboard. Okay. So I'm going to set up a simple web server. Don't worry, I'll give you the link for that. Again, another challenge. Make it crash. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Not from here. So we have some sample images from here. A sample web server. Okay, the name already exits. Okay, okay. Sample two. Just give me a minute. Once it completes, now the building is running. Once it completes, we will get the URL. Okay, done. Just take the refresh. Yeah. So this is the URL. I'm going to paste in the chat box. Okay, just try this link and let me know if you are able to see the outcome. Please type yes if you are able to access. Let's see if this is going to crash or not. This again without load balancer, but we increase. We implement the load balancer. It's working, yeah? Okay. Please try everyone from your all Digital gadgets like mobile, tab. So I want to increase the traffic to this web server. I want the real traffic. I don't want to mimic that with the scripting or on. Still able to write. Yeah. Let's see the topology, how much resource utilization. So I'm going to observe. Twenty nine percentage. Not much. Yeah, we can I can monitor from here. Yes, still it is running without any issues. Yeah, port is nothing but just for your understanding. Uh, in Kubernetes, we, we name it as a port, but just for understanding. Just consider it as a container, just one container. Just one container saving. 
Is, is it the, ah, this is the old one, sorry. <coughs> this is the one, right? <coughs> Still accessible. Okay, so what I was planning, uh, just in case if it goes down, I can increase the number of containers just by pressing that. Just just within a few clicks, I can increase the number of the load balancers. So currently one pod or one container, so I can manually scale to two. So that means two ports are two containers are serving two containers are in a load balanced environment which serves this content. Yeah. And if I delete any one of these. I'm deleting delete port. See, when I delete, it automatically creates a new one. That is the advantage of container orchestration. But in a previous demonstration, when I deleted one container, it's gone. Right. So I'm going to delete all the one. Uh, let me scale down to one right scale down to one so I, I request everyone to keep on accessing this web server and let me know that if it goes down still it's up welcome to static HTTPD. yes still it is up no downtime so only one port I'm going to delete that port. Let's see. Yeah, just uh, note the name of this container, WS. Uh, uh, it end with, ends with the double V, right? Yeah. So I'm going to delete that. See, this new one is automatically created. I hope all of you witnessed that. So I deleted the single one. So without load balancer, I deleted the single container. And with the help of this container orchestration, it automatically created the new one without giving any that downtime. Yeah, still you are accessible. Got page got loaded, got one error. Is it? But in my case, yeah, the page was refreshing. Okay. Now maybe maybe that reason, yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, Nidesh, uh, in 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 a real scenario, uh, we won't do like this way. Just for testing purpose, I did that way. In real purpose, we keep at least two ports, then we may delete the third one, right? We don't take this kind of risk in the production environment. But just for the testing and understanding purpose, I did that, that <clears throat> I did like that way. Okay. Okay, so that was load balancing with the auto scaling or manual scaling. Now think about uh, CI/CD, continuous integration and continuous deployment. Or you might have heard about DevOps, right? Yeah, one of the methodology or the best methodology used in uh, deployments. Just look into this architecture. If you are a developer, which means you develop the source code. 
so you keep the source codes in a github or any kind of so uh, software source code repository yeah with that source code with that source code you can simply uh, run your application so which means the middle step that is creation of image you can skip the creation of image we can skip in the sense it is it doesn't mean that it is not happening it is happening but automated to so just think in a simple way if you are a developer or 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 if you if you are a person who knows to how to create a source code that's enough with that skill you can deploy the source code in openshift cluster at the same way we should have some skilled openshift or orchestration engineers to manage this cluster so one side developer will feel it is easy same like uh, for me it was easy to set up a load balancer and web servers right but there are some engineers they, they are working in aws data centers to make that easy for me or make that easy for you so same way this area as we are as uh, as a uh, devops engineers or sre engineers or or, or 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 orchestration engineers or openshift engineers we manage the cluster here and as a developer just throw the source code into the cluster and the cluster will do the magic i mean that de for the developer it feels like okay this is a magic okay i just uh, throw uh, throw throw through the source code into the cluster and we got the application running back that i'm going to demonstrate now code build deploy this we can automate continuous integration and continuous deployment so i'm going to demonstrate that for the time being i'm going to act as a php developer okay just a php developer i make some changes in the source code and this open shift with the help of webhook it automatically triggers the changes happening in the source code so based on the source code changes it automatically redeploys our application in the cluster everything is automated so let's see how it's going to happen so this is help with the help of s2i and webhook so i have my source code in my git repository this is my git repository so this is my url to my source code send to on 180 apps and s2i and this is php hello world index.php and hello world welcome to red hat php version is so this is what I'm going to uh, display first, then we'll change the content later on. Okay. So let's take the URL. Yeah, your URL is available in my dashboard. So I'll just delete this deployment. <clears throat> Just saving some resources for the next demo. <clears throat> so last time I had the image. This time I don't have the image. I import from Git. I have the source code, right? Uh, Git reference that is branch name is S2I. S2I, yeah. Then context directory that is PHP, hello world. Yeah. See, it's automatically detected builder image. So the OpenShift or the S2A engine automatically detected the builder image. So this is going to be a sample app. 
Okay, the name I already used it. That's okay. We'll use another name. So see, see the difference. Last time I used the image. This time I don't have the image. I just use the source code. So using that source code, I'm going to get the web server. I mean web container server. Please wait until this build completes. Then we we automate the changes. Okay, it's ready. Uh, page opening. Hello world, welcome to Red Hat PHP version is okay. Uh, I am pasting this link in the chat box. Okay. Please confirm if you can access is accessible. Yeah. So it's showing hello world, welcome to Red Hat, right? So okay, yeah, yeah. So now I'm going to automate. Now I am going to automate. Automate in the sense when I make any changes in the source code, it automatically redeploy our application. So I'm going back to topology here. So for automatic triggering of this, I need uh, I need to set up some tools like uh, web hooks. So that will help me to automate the triggering. So copy the URL with secret, and I'm going to hit. So in the settings, there is something called uh, web hooks, hard web hook. Okay, I need to authenticate from my mobile. Okay. Okay, I approved from my mobile. Yeah, this is the URL which I copied from there, and this is going to be the content like application JSON. And uh, I'm going to automate that. Send me everything. That means if I do anything in the source code, it automatically triggers. Add that hook. Okay, that is created. Now, now I ask Chat GPT to. Give me some PHP source code. So write and get me some PHP source code. Sample PHP source code. <clears throat> so I'm going to change the source code. Okay, refresh. I hope everyone familiar with ChatGPT, right? Right sample PHP source. Okay, it displays hello world. Let's try that. So copy the code. I'm going back to the GitHub. GitHub. Then PHP hello world. I have the index.php here. So I'm going to replace this content. Okay. Okay. So commit changes. So it should, it should automatically reflect here. Let's see. Let's see. Where is that? Yeah. I'm not doing anything. 
just wait for some time. I mean, meanwhile, you'll get the previous data. It automatically redeploys. You can see in the start uh, status here. I think it says completed. Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, it's my mistake. I edited in uh, the configuration was correct. I edited in S uh, master branch, not in S2I. So that is what. So, yeah, I supposed to edit here. So I edited in a wrong branch. Oh, sorry, not this one. The one which I got from Chat GPT. Copy the code. Yeah, then commit changes. Now let's see if it is started automatically. See, the build is running. So after that build completes, you will get the new page. Build still running. I didn't initially initiate this. It automatically triggered. Yeah, now it's completed. Same URL. No change in the URL. Just refresh the URL which I gave earlier. Yes, hello world. Now the source com source code completely changed and uh, that triggered automatically uh, for the deployment of new application. Yeah. Did you notice the change? Yes. Yes, it changed, right? Yes. See, we've automated it. Yes, we automated. Uh, as a developer, we changed the source code and automatically deployed. But who was responsible for making it possible? The OpenShift or uh, cluster administrators. They configured, they automated it so that developer could see the magic. <clears throat> yeah. So that was S2I with automated uh, orchestration. And one more point I want to discuss today that is Ansible, which uh, is not related to or orchestration. This is this you can consider as a separate leap. Ansible is one of the uh, automation tool for provisioning or configuration management or application deployment. So it uses SSS connection parallelly to do the actions. For example, you want to set up a web server, right? We we, we did it in a, a AWS with a load balancer, right? So if you want to change the content, now the content is web server 123. So if you want to change the content without manually going into each instance and changing the content, we can simply run Ansible playbooks. Sorry, so that I, that I will show you.
So I have the playbook there. If not record, I'm closing all the tabs. So I have a controller machine, Ansible controller machine in AWS. That is Ansible control node. So I'm going to connect to that machine. So everyone, uh, uh, just a minute. Yeah, I'm connecting to the control machine. Yes, I connected. And uh, I need to give this URL again, right? Okay, I'm pasting in the chat box. So now you, you just look into this URL, the one which we configured the, uh, the, the first time. Welcome to Web, Web, Web Server 3. You have server one. Still, you are getting this right. One, two, three. Any one of these right. So, with a simple script, I'm going to change the content of all these three servers. So, we just continuously checking this content. Okay, and and, and in between, you can look into my screen also. If you have, a, if you are, if you are using a mobile device from mobile device, uh, you just use this URL, and in your system. You can watch my shared screen. So I have the playbook here. WebServer.yaml, uh, that is going to uh, okay. So don't worry. I want to make it interactive, so I will interact with the chat GPT so that you can also ask GPT to write. An Ansible playbook, okay, to set up web server in rel which serves the content. Hello, wait. Okay, and then. So this is an automation script. So this is going to implement in all the nodes. Yeah, I think. <clears throat> the rest of everything is already there, I right? just. <clears throat> Make the content change in an existing file. So currently, it is showing uh, the web server web server's host name. So that's why welcome to web server one two three. So I'm going to change that with the. Uh, Hello, Red. Saving the file, I'm running the script. So after com a successful completion of this playbook, you will see the change. You can see some green signals, that means it's already done. If you see some yellow, that means just happened, yeah. Just change the index page. Now let's check the web page content. Hello, wait. Right now, 
uh, it's hello world for everyone. There is no difference. Yes, it's changed. Same URL. I didn't give you any new URL. Yeah. So this is the automation. For the users, they won't feel any difference. Same URL, but the contents we can change it without any manual work with help of automation. Yeah. So personally, I can say I am RHCEA, uh, that is Red Hat Certified Architect. So in the beginning, I told, yeah, I started learning Linux, then automation. Yeah, I, I handle various projects uh, which which happen which involves in this domain. So RHCSA, uh, I did RHCSA for getting uh, a manual system administration uh, skill set because before doing any automation, you should get skilled in 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 that domain, right? For example, you you know how to use the calculator, but what is happening in the calculator? You should understand or if you are a network engineer you can easily manage a subset uh, manage the subnetting with, it, with some apps but it's important to have some idea about how it happens manually so rhcsa helped me to learn the uh, linux administration manually then rhce sorry rhcsa manual administration then rhce how to automate that with the ansible then I demonstrated some AWS uh, services, right? Yeah, that comes under AWS courses like AWS Certified Solution Architect. Then containerization, container orchestration, platform as a service like uh, Red Hat OpenShift. Yeah, DO 180 and 280 helped me to start with the skills. So now, and of course, you need to practice in your own, or you need to improve in your own way. So these courses help me to start with the skills. RHCSA, RHCE, AWS, DO180, and DO280. And of course, I got certified on this because for becoming RHCA, Red Hat Certified Architect, uh, after RHC, that is a basic certification from Red Hat. So after RHC is CE, I did a uh, minimum of five certification expertise certification in different domains like cloud automation security storage hybrid cloud management etc so that is how i became rhca thanks to ipsr uh, yeah so that's my journey in my career development so i thought uh, yeah uh, because I was very, very, very much passionate about these technologies like uh, cloud containers and automation. So, yeah, that motivated me to think more about these technologies. And uh, I hope this helped you as well. I hope so. Yeah, now we can have questions here. Yeah. Uh, Sijin, if you can hear me. Uh... Yes, and uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. So uh, right, okay. I think we can open for the questions, right? Yeah, we can do some, uh, uh, take some questions and answer them. If you yeah, would like yeah. to ask some questions to uh, send, you can ask. Please note that everybody, you will be getting a participation certificate for this program, for this webinar. In fact, um, you will be getting the details of it through your registered mail by the next uh, week. Mail. So in that, it will describe on how to uh, download your certificate. I'm checking the chat. Do you? Do I need to specifically answer any question? Because most of the questions are related to slides and uh, recording, right? Uh, yeah, anyway, you are going to get through LMS. Yeah. 
anything which i not answered uh, please please uh, put put that question again in the chat box so that i can easily look into that and answer thank you thank you for the valuable All right. If uh, yeah, I just answer regarding that. If you for the certification, see the certificate uh, to download the certificate, you will get access to the LMS. How to access the LMS will be uh, given in the email that will be sent to you by next week. Okay. Yes. Even the recording will be in that LMS, so you will get access to the LMS and the details of it will will be shared through the email. Okay. So please. Uh, check your emails by next week, then you will get the details. All right, I think then we will move on to the word of thanks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the word of thanks will be delivered by Ambli Thomas. She's a senior lecturer, Information Technology Department, Bodo University, Gabron Campus. She is an MCA, M MED. Uh, certification certified Android application engineers, certified IBM Big Data Engineer, Microsoft certified professional, uh, and also a certified associate on fundamentals of digital teaching and learning. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Sijin. Uh, greetings to everyone present online today. Uh, on behalf of the Faculty of Engineering and Technology, Botha University, Botswana. I would like to express my gratitude to all esteemed delegates of the webinar for their presence and contribution to make this webinar a great success. And I extend my gratitude to our resource person, Mr. Sen John Providence, Manager Technical Services, IPSR, to take out time from his busy schedule to grace the event. Thank you, sir, for sharing your experiences and knowledge uh, in cloud containers and automation. The concept was uh, explained in a very simpler manner using real time examples. So I believe that we all managed to enrich our knowledge from this intercollegiate event. And a special thanks to Dr. Mendes Decker, CEO of IPSR and Dr. Srinath Dos, uh, Dean of FET, Bhutto University, for facilitating this joint effort and uh, for organizing this uh, international webinar a team of 10 members including the ceo and the senior professionals from ipsr were actively involved i must thank the event coordinator mr jamon kuriakos event moderator mr sijin jacob george then the it training division of ipsr and the digital marketing team of ipsr for the tireless effort to make this webinar successful. And I thank all the participants, students, job seekers, and teachers for their active participation and presence. Both the universities always uh, open to have collaborative events like this. I hope we continue to organize such events in the future for the upliftment of our students. Thank you everyone once again for making it a great success. Thank you. Thank you, Ambali Thomas, for the word of thanks. Uh, send you there online. Yes, 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 I'm here. Yes. Yeah, there is one question. Um, um, I think we can take one or two questions. Uh, uh, first, I will take this um, uh, question for you. Uh, what is the difference between system administrator and the cloud engineer for architecture? Okay, system administration means, yeah. So, uh, like I told earlier, uh, if you know, if you have the skills to manage a Linux operating system, then I can say, uh, yeah, I am a system administrator, uh, which is configured with Linux. Or if you know uh, how to automate the task, then you can say system administration or automation uh, engineer. Then if, if you are uh, uh, managing this uh, administration in a cloud, uh, that, which, which means, running a linux server in a cloud then it's a combination of system administration so simply i can say it's a cloud administrator and if you have sorry 
if you have multiple domain knowledge multiple domain expertise yeah then we can call it as a architect all right um there is one question from uh, how can I access learning tools of such courses and are there short courses you want me to take that yeah please please, please. Oh, all right, all right. okay thanks um, um Dodo, uh, that's a good question uh, see these um, um uh, courses um uh, depending on whether you're doing rs csac uh, okay you have different um uh, they are not short courses as such okay so you can actually have um, courses uh, uh, tailored to your needs, uh, the details of which are there in the LMS. Okay, so in the LMS, you can actually see um, uh, reference materials to um, uh, these courses. Okay, so if you go through that, you also have page links to these courses. You can actually go through them. You can see the duration of these courses, uh, the courses on um, uh, cloud and uh, DevOps. You can also see um, the courses on RHCSS, E, AWS. Uh, all these courses are listed out there, okay, with the duration as well. All right. So uh, it's got a, um, a complete details of all the courses that you would like to, you know, pursue. Okay, the, Sijin, there is a question that I can answer. How can I start a career in cloud? Okay. Yeah. So I, I I would recommend start with Linux because most of the cloud technologies are implemented in Linux. L like uh, how I started, yeah, start with Linux from uh, through RHCS course. Then of course aut uh, automation because nowadays, especially we are in automated uh, or, or or artificial intelligent uh, environment, so we should have the skills on automation. Then, uh, like AWS or Azure, will help you to understand how the cloud works and uh, how we manage projects when it comes into cloud environment. Yeah, so start with RHC, say RHC, then AWS, Azure, like that way. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh... As a beginner, yeah, you would like to read that. Uh, As a beginner, if we do these five certification together, including one cloud and OpenShift part one, part two, and RHC for a job seeker as a beginner, is it helpful rather do a job? Yeah, uh, so anything you can do it together. We'll start with the RHC SA, RHC, then uh, yeah, start with the junior DevOps engineer or junior cloud engineer. Yeah, apparently you can gain these certifications also. See, it's like this. If you do the certification, it will be easier for you to get a job. Yeah. That would be how we would put it. Yeah. You might get a job, but uh, usually what we have seen is uh, they would think of doing the certification later, but once in, they are in the job, they find it difficult. They find it, they don't get much of a time to do the certification as such. So it would be better if you can actually do the platform courses, at least the RCSC part first, and take, uh, and once you're in the job, then depending upon your job, you go for the higher specialized uh, courses. That would be how we would say this. Yeah, why are microservices important for a true cloud environment? Yeah, so in containerization, we we use multi-container architecture. For example, if you look, if you open an application, each portion of the application is containerized. So in that way, we we can make that portion highly available and scalable. So each portion of an application. So in that sense, yes, yeah, microservices are more important than them. So another question: I am a network security and computer forensics student. Am I still a, anyone? Anyone who has got passionate uh, about these technologies? Because from my experience or from IPSR experience, we have students. I would say this domain, like the computer science domain, uh, some someone like uh, BSc chemistry, BSc physics, biology, then psychology. So yeah, the, th the in, in short, the thing is, yeah, if you are uh, interested and passionate towards these technologies, yeah, you can start from the RHCSA. The past is not important. Starting from the RHCSA, and automation, cloud, DevOps. Yeah, your journey goes like that way. 
And not only really that, when you're learning Red Hat system administration, uh, you're basically learning uh, li uh, Linux. That actually is, uh, it will in fact help you in your uh, courses as well. So it's good. It's, in fact, it will be a stepping stone for you to learn the higher modules of um, the other certifications. Uh, there's a question, RSCS is sufficient for a good job? Yes, RSCS is good, but if it, we would suggest taking till RSC at least because they because most companies would ask for a Red Certified Engineer certification. That is what we would recommend. The expected salary of RSC is a fresher CSC2 student. You can Google that out. You can see the price. Uh, on generally, if you see it, they are paid very well. That is what we can see. After completing a RSCSC, can I start my career as a crowd engineer? Uh, CSSC uh, certifications would be just your platform courses. Okay, so if you want to um if you want to um, uh, go as a cloud engineer you might have to do more courses based on that maybe um uh based on aws or uh even open shift courses that are being delivered by either aws or uh Red Hat. all right uh i think we can end Uh, so, and I think we have taken all the questions, right? Do you see any more questions? Uh, yeah, what the <clears throat> job titles can RHCS or RHC apply? Yeah, Linux administrator, system administrator, automation engineer, junior DevOps engineer, because Linux is one of the platform used in DevOps. Yes. Yeah. You can go up to cloud engineer, cloud, cloud architect, anything, basically. So CSS will be your stepping stone, basically. All right, then. All uh, right. I, I think one, one, one question from uh, uh, YouTube and Ria. Yeah, so the question is, Okay. can you please share how to plan or learn for the AWS certification exam? Yes, uh, IPSR offers AWS course. So if you go through that course, you will get enough skills for getting certified in AWS uh, Architect Associate, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, okay, there's one more. What of some prestigious companies we can apply after RHC, or RHC? If you are from India, any of the MNCs, you can be placed with, because people who have done certifications with have, have been placed with uh, um, uh, many of the MNCs for, which are there in India. India. And it can, and the certification is international certification, so you can also get jobs abroad. So that is not an issue. Yeah. Is Linux administration job good for us? Yeah, start with Linux administration, then automation engineer, um, cloud engineer, DevOps engineer, SRE engineer. Yeah, you 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 can build your career like that way. Yes, thank you. Thank you from yes, I can see a thank you from Botswana. You're most welcome. Okay. Yeah. Good from India. Yes. Uh, are you seeing any other questions uh, sent from YouTube? Uh, I did see many questions. Uh, I think the job titles can uh, after RHC, RHC, we, we, we answered that right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. YouTube is done. So, yes. We picked that up. Yeah. 
and and more i think more details will be uh, sharing through uh, lms as well right yes the lms has please uh, when uh, when you go through the lms okay the lms has also got something about the reference materials please go through the reference materials which will okay which will be have uh, um, listing out about the courses the course pages will also be there okay so to go through them okay and uh, okay somebody's asked for the recorded session the recorded session is also there in the lms that we will list it we will give you the details in the email and please check your uh, registered email to uh, with the details it will come to you by next week of this week Yes, we would surely love to do another webinar as well with another topic, with the current uh, um, technical topic. We would definitely do it. All right. Thank you all for your time. Thank you for uh, attending this session. We uh, we would like to thank you for taking your time to attend this session. Uh, we will end for now. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, that, that links will be shared through LMS. Yeah, all the free links will be shared through LMS.